Right, let's suppose somebody's watching this and they say, okay, this guy has done a great job of building a great real estate business. I want to invest with him or I want to invest in real estate. For the individual investor, uh, what is the best way to invest in real estate? So for the individual investor, I'd say there are a couple of ways. One is there's a public REIT market where you can invest in some excellent companies here in the United States. There are REITs, frankly, around the world. Um, that's one way to do it. Another way to do it uh, today is we have things called private REITs. We at Blackstone have a vehicle called B-REIT, uh, which today uh, owns primarily logistics and rental apartments across the Southeast and Southwest of the United States. It is a product that we're very proud of because historically, they, people did not do a great job offering private real estate to individual investors. And we've really focused on trying to deliver a first class product um, and done by our people in the right way. And that's another way to do it. There are others who offer similar products. For some who are more adventurous, they can partner with local developers, let's say. Um, the, the challenge I worry about that is just misalignment of interests and liquidity. How do you get out at some point, you know, investing, and you're generally not getting a lot of diversity in that approach. Well, are you worried about the economy now? Its economy's been pretty good, but it probably will head down at some point. The economy's always correct. So if I say I want to invest in real estate, is now a good time, or should I wait a while before the economy uh, corrects? I, I think it's still a pretty good time for real estate, and I'd say it for a couple reasons. One is the, the, the warning signs for real estate are, are twofold, too much leverage, too much capital, and we don't really have that in the real estate system today. The other, too many cranes, too much building. And we're actually uh, below historic levels in terms of new supply. The other thing I'd point out, if you looked at the S&P 500, uh, it's delivered something like four times the return of, of public REITs uh, since the beginning of 20 before COVID. So real estate is lagging coming out of the recovery because obviously people have been concerned about the physical world. Um, I think real estate here, as the economy reopens, people go back into spaces, is going to see a little bit of a bounce. Um, I think the risk is, um, you know, do interest rates move a lot? That's a bit of a, a threat. I would say one positive thing about real estate also is inflation, remember, drives up the replacement cost of buildings. And that gives you a little bit of a cushion on existing real estate. What's the best investment advice you ever received? You know, what I'd say is, I don't know if it's advice or the, what I've learned along the way, but, but definitely the best thing is to be a high conviction investor. That when you dabble and just put a bunch of money here in things you don't know or understand, it tends to work out badly. But when you see something, single family housing, global logistics, the movement of everything online, and you lean into that, that's when you have the best outcomes. And to me, that's really important. If I said to you, I have $100,000 and I want to invest it in real estate or something else, that's all I have, $100,000, where, where should I put my 100000 today? Well, I, I would say in real estate, um, you know, we love what we're doing in the private REIT space. I think you can invest in a good basket of public REITs as well. More generally, I think the S&P 500. I think the market's trading, even though values have moved a lot, the market's trading um, in the low 20s, and when you compare that to where the 10-year is at 1.6%, I think you'll do fine over a long period of time. Plus, there's a lot of exposure to fast-growing tech companies in there. Where should I not invest my money? You should stay away from buggy whip businesses. You okay. should stay away from landline phone companies and some of the legacy retailers, some legacy media businesses. You want to focus on the future. And I would just say this on real estate in particular, if I had one piece of advice where geographically is go where the creative and technology types are, because those are the markets where there'll be the most economic activity. So the West Coast of the United States, Austin, Texas, Cambridge, Shenzhen, London, Amsterdam, Tel Aviv, Bangalore. Tech is driving so much of the growth in this global economy. Those are the most interesting places to invest. Okay, do people come up to you at cocktail parties when, remember what cocktail parties were when people used to get together? Um, they are, ask you for any investment advice uh, and you always say just invest with my firm or what do you give people advice? You know, people, it's funny, they, they often ask me residential home prices, which is not my area of expertise. And you know, what I tend to tell people is focus on the longer term. 
focus on, you know, I think the danger of the world we live in, the sort of Snapchat, TikTok, meme stock thing is dangerous. And what you want to say is, is this fundamentally a good business? Is it in a good sector? Is this a good piece of real estate where supply is limited, demand is favorable? And if you own something good, hold it for a long period of time. So to me, find those right neighborhoods to invest in, deploy your capital, and then be patient.